Hi viewers, how are you? Very special episode today live from our VEZ Hackathon where we have thousands of people with nine specific problems and hundreds of teams trying to solve the most nefarious digital transformation questions that our customers have. So more on that to follow, but first let me introduce my special guest, top talent, Farhana Chaudhry, who runs our enterprise marketing for us at VEZ. So Farhana, welcome aboard. Yeah. Thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity. Really excited to be joining and to talk about Hackathon. Gosh. We're excited too. So can you tell the viewers a little bit about what's going on here today? Well, within Basking Ridge and across multiple locations across the world, we've got lots of B-teamers who have gathered to solve, you heard Janet allude to, the problems. So these were really designed to address what do our customers need from us, right? Because that's the starting point for any kind of transformation. Any digitization should begin with the customer. So in Basking Ridge, we've got hundreds of people gathered to you know, task themselves with one particular problem. And there's a lot of problem solving going on. I've been out in the rooms and it has been exciting. If you want to see an excited group of people, even 36 hours in, Basking Ridge, New Jersey is the location today. But what I really saw and I wanted to kind of segue into is a couple of super strong uh, female and diverse team captains. Mm -hmm. So uh, unbelievable to see kind of the, the lean in, to use the industry mm -hmm. term. So talk a little bit, a couple of those folks are on your team. So talk about what are you doing, and this is my topic of my vlog, to help diverse leaders emerge and have that voice and that confidence to lead a group of peers through a hackathon. That's a pretty big job. Oh gosh, and I think I'm, I'm one of those leaders here in, in the business, really taking, um, you know, learning from you, Janet, in looking at the skills across the team. Um, I think I'm, I'm sort of edging towards having more female leaders than men. Um, mm. And that wasn't by design. It's just that I see a lot of the skills that are needed in the phase of transformation that Verizon is in or VEZ is in right now, requiring those skills or really hand-holding the teams through the transition, understanding what's needed and the speed with which we need to execute. So, you know, one particular example of one of my leaders who's addressing this pre-sales problem of how do customers engage with us she comes with a vlss background design thinking very inclusive just an excellent communicator all the inherent skills that you know we typically associate with a female leader male leaders have these also but these are the skills required for that transition and for VEZ to really transform itself to be more digital what an interesting perspective. And, and for my viewers, you know, I've had a couple of perspectives with folks like Dave Page and Jack Cadell about what they're doing for leadership. And I'm, I'm having the same leadership series now uh, with folks that I respect that are great leaders like Farhana. They're leading us into kicking and screaming some days, the next generation here. Uh, and I think you bring up a great point. So when you think about a diverse workforce, I always say, look for women to win for any diverse group to win mm -hmm. no one needs to lose right there's enough room at the table for all of us to be successful and, and frankly if we're to be successful in the united states in digital transformation mm -hmm. we need a fresh new start the right. way we did in information information technology right mm -hmm. those were all new entrants they were all run by a very diverse group right. of thinkers largely male but a very diverse group of thinkers and the digital age is coming with the same thing. And if you look at countries like France as an example, where they have a mm -hmm. written digital plan, where they actually have documented what they need to do mm -hmm. in STEM, in education, right. to get diverse people and startups in the country, they are getting very quickly to the point where they're going to be a major competitor for VC money uh, for both female-led as well right. as diverse-led businesses in the next stage of digital transformation. Mm -hmm. So exciting that you're doing almost your own little incubator here in the U.S., which hint, hint for anybody listening, we don't have a digital plan yet, and the U.S. really should have one. So more on that uh, to follow from fantastic folks like John Chambers, who's uh, working that with our government. But you're saying, hey, I'm not going to wait for someone to kind of craft this digital plan. We're right. gonna hack our way into having the right program, strategies. What do you hope comes out of this? You know for what? You? I think a lot of it is just trialing some of these things out. There's nothing stopping any one of us in this enterprise space to just go and try our own hackathon. And you'll remember this, Janet, you know, earlier in the year, 
marketing was the first in Verizon yeah. to attack a problem and it was how do we tell our story out to the market mm -hmm. and we led a hackathon over you know it was 24 hours and we came up with a brand new market leading story that the whole organization could use so you know this doesn't have to be a coding example hacking is there to really address something that you need to attack quickly and get results for so i i would encourage anyone to really sit down and look at what are you chartered with today as a leader what do you need to solve what's really going to make a difference to your organization and go find that cross-functional team and by the way some of the relationships that you know we kind of secured during that process they've had this phenomenal impact on how we've worked together since. So it really goes a long way in figuring out which teams you need to work with, how you can be inclusive with that team, and really what the impact will be thereafter. And, and now we've got other groups within the organization wanting to learn from us. I mean, I had someone who reached out to me, a senior leader, and said, hey, do you have the blueprint of how you executed on that hackathon? I was like, not really it was a problem and it was these are the people who are going to help me solve it so yeah. it's pretty straightforward and i think we get sucked into this notion of there must be documented you know <laughs> organized you formal <laughs> rules and a playbook da, da, da. it's like no it's some of it is common sense yep. you know what your problems are write it down and then figure out who are the people who could really help solve it and they would benefit from it also because that then gives you a sense of their motivation. And the hackathon lets you draft almost a dream team. Right? right. So you don't have to say, oh, I don't have this person on my team or I don't have this skill in my organization. You can take from across whatever size company or community uh, uh, you're in, you can just pick, draft your perfect candidates. It's like fantasy football, but right. 48 hours. Um, and you can draft your dream team. Right. And who knows who wins? Because sometimes your dream team isn't always your dream team. So sometimes people come up with ideas, and I was just in one of your team's uh, sessions yesterday, and watched them have a breakthrough. And, and it came, the best marketing idea in the room came from somebody from sales operations. Right. So you just never know, right, where that audience is exactly. going to just come to play and, and bring an idea that you never would have thought of in the right. past. Our Vez story is, a, I think, a spectacular example mm -hmm. of where, as an organization, we said it's tough to tell this broad of a portfolio story. Right. What do we do to help our customers know what Verizon can help them with and what our ecosystem of partners can exactly. help them with? And we synthesized it down, and most of our teams uh, across the company, thousands of people, have recorded videos on it, held competitions on right. it, had best pitch parties. Six and a half thousand downloads wow. and, and you know, people telling it in their unique way. So there's something to be said about being consistent but simple enough and inclusive that people feel they can tell it in that way. And you didn't have to pay a big agency. You didn't have to wait months. You were done in a day or two. Real business impact. And then iteration. Right. So exactly. talk a little bit about that agile thought of iteration and how you as a leader help your team. And I've seen you do this just flawlessly, so that's why I want to have this conversation. What do you do when you've got these really, really bright young people in your teams that are bringing great ideas, but you, you have to coach them through, it doesn't have to be perfect the first time, but at some point in time it has to be good enough? Right. How do you help them make those iterations in a way that is indeed motivating? You know, it's, it's really interesting, and I think part of it is, again, learning yourself when you've been in roles and you, you kind of get that critical feedback and you're, you know, destroyed, and then you've got to pick yourself up right. from the floor. <laughs> so, I thought it was so good. <laughs> it's, and, and one of the things I've really, um, I really liked, and it was from um, a session we had uh, with Carla Harris, who's, yes. you know, reputable... Um, absolute phenomenon in, in sort of the in investment and banking uh, area and she there was something that really stuck with me with you know what she shared and it was one of her pearls of, uh, of wisdom I guess she said really help people understand what's what does success look like mm. define it help them visualize it just help them understand what that goal looks like so that they're not confused about their own output and the level to which they are closer to that defined, um, you know, success. Isn't that a great piece of advice? And it, and it really does help yeah. because you're focused. You know if you're about 30% there, you're 50% or you're really close. So, 
you know, a lot of it is I, I firstly, I, I get my team to really prioritize because, you know, we Important. cannot deliver everything, but there are clear priorities for the business that are judged on impact, financial output, metrics right. for the business. So be clear on what you're doing and whether it's the right thing for the firm. So then the next step is, okay, well, let's define it. Let's just figure out who is this going to impact? For what reason? And what does good look like? So if we have that end goal in sight, then at least we can say, hey, here's a level of effort that's required and here's kind of the next steps. And I have this, you know, weekly cadence with my team and you quickly realize you may need a little more hand-holding than others. Sure. And you've got to give that opportunity to coach them through it because... We've all had instances where, you know, you've worked on a project and you may think it's great and then you realize that it wasn't quite to scratch and you <laughs> would have benefited from Someone having yeah. that guidance along the way. So yeah. Before knowing, you get so far exactly. in that you're kind of entrenched. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, I mean, I just had a recent example where I'd set a task for one of, um, one of my team members and I kind of, you know, assumed that they would know what they needed to do and it didn't quite go to plan and I... And I was at that moment where, you know, I could have turned into the crazy evil queen boss and like, oh, you should have known what to do. And I took a moment and I thought, hang on a minute, did I give them the time and at least the benefit of how I wanted to see it? Because yeah. they, what they produced may have been good enough for, you know, their predecessors. That's a very so good point. Yep. Letting a very them good know. Point. Yep. Right. So. And so here's an expert tip for my viewers that uh, I received many, many years ago from one of my mentors, which was the best question to ask somebody when you assign them a project to see if they understand what success is, is if a year from now we're popping a bottle of champagne or the celebration of your choice, minus chocolate, it's always chocolate, <laughs> um, what would you be opening that right. bottle of champagne celebrating? What would you be saying we did or we achieved? Right. And it's so telling because so many people can't answer the question. Right. Well, we delivered it on time. That's not successful. No. Um, we delivered what the boss wanted. That might help you in your job, but it's not going to help you in your firm's right. goals. It's you know, really around what is it, what impact did you think you were going to have, right. and what would you truly be celebrating? So something to challenge you with. Okay, so we're in the speed round now. Thank you for doing this. This is a, not her only episode. She's going to have to do these again and again. <laughs> so the speed episode, I get to ask you a couple of questions. You answer one sentence as quick as you can. You ready? Ready. Okay. Favorite book? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> So I'll tell you the part that I'm more for that reading books. No, no, uh, actually, okay. the uh, Digital to the Core, most recent one and favorite right now. I love that. You know, what a great book that is. My favorite still is Who's Got Your Back from Keith Frazzi. I'm still, I'm still stuck on that. Uh, still kind of transitioning into the sales leadership role. It's just oh. such a good reminder to make sure that uh, you're practicing that spirit, spirit of generosity uh, that Keith proclaims. Okay, so favorite music or song? Oh, my gosh. You said quick on these. Um... Again, right now, it's Bullet the Blue Sky by U2, just because it's kind of coining what's going on. I love that. It's like your anthem song. Yeah. Interesting. So I'm going to have to change my anthem song, because it's, for those of you who are not familiar with European music, it's Ding-a-Dong. Uh, so look it up. It's fun. Uh, it makes <laughs> you just kind of dance in the car, and that's my motivation this morning after not a lot of sleep in the hackathon. Okay, so easier questions. So if you could be anything other than in technology... What would your dream job be? Oh my gosh, I would be a couture designer. <gasps> nice. Oh, so that's taken now. I'll have to get back to you guys. But I would be. A, I would probably run a food truck. Uh, I love love to cook, <laughs> but I like to cook fast, not fancy. So I'm always like, I'm gonna get a food truck on a beach somewhere. It'll work out. That would be my second. To be fair, I right, love I'll to be your assistant. I, yeah, okay, I'll be your, your assistant. Patties, I'm like so good. good, good fast, good to go. And then finally, if you had one, and this one you could take a little time on, if you had one piece of advice for women about entering technology and wanting to be in technology, uh, what would it be? If you're entering, I think do your research know what's out there today, have a perspective, understand what interests you because, you know, tech, I, I think like any other industry, you've got to have passion for it. You've got to understand, you know, if there's a personal aspect that really, you know, excites you, like I get super excited about anything with analytics, like if, if me as a customer can benefit from my habits and how that's going to drive an organization. That is of interest to me. So with tech, have your own perspective, do your research, and be passionate about something. Otherwise, 
you know, you just gotta figure out if it's the right space for you. And then the bonus question, one piece of advice for women thinking about leaving the industry. As you know, we have a huge oh problem goodness. with turnover. Uh, so one piece of advice for women to keep them in the industry. Or... Here's the thing. You're probably not consciously thinking about leaving the industry. You're maybe leaving a boss. You're maybe even leaving a role that you're dissatisfied with. Address the problem because that problem isn't going to go away wherever you go. So figure it out. Fix the boss. Find another boss and change your role, do something that will positively impact you as an individual, and it sets the precedent around how you problem solve. Hack it. I love that. So be careful what you run away from. Great advice from Farhana. I've seen so many women leave the industry. Then I ran into them five years later at some other event, and they regret it gratefully because really exactly what Farhana said, right? They didn't leave the industry. They left a boss or a situation or a job or a project that they didn't like and they ended up somewhere else making less money, having less fun with the same exact problem. So very sage advice. So thank you for joining us. And as always, subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you don't miss a single episode with our great leaders like Farhana. Thanks for your time. 